gank up heroes. Low movement speed for the Shadow Shaman, and low life points coming in for, for the Luna. So with the two of them together, hello! Radiant ancient Team Apparition pick. will arrive. So that's an aggro tri lane, Mirana Wraith King, as well as Ancient Apparition together, which means it's Darkseer up against Centaur up on the top lane, and then we just have one support for DT, as well as the mid solos to cap up right now. So more than likely coming into our last stage here, it should be DT getting themselves a secondary support hero, and I would suggest the Dazzle probably above anything else at this point, just because the amount of pain will be coming towards that bottom lane. Ten they don't have the control remaining. from the Shadow Shaman. All they can look for is range harassment and survivability. That's the Five only thing that will let them win remaining. this. <laughs> Funny. I Reserve time. Just had a really good idea for a hero they could still play. <laughs> um, they could bring in the Ursa into this game. And the reason I say that is because Na'Vi could disintegrate Roshan in the early stages. They're playing on the dire side again here. In a level 1 fight, you want to try and throw Luna, Shadow Shaman, and Centaur into that one when Na'Vi can turn around and pummel into you. I would back Na'Vi in that fight any day. Inside the pit, they can almost use it as bait as well. So just to toss that one in there. Or we could just see a Templar Assassin and we go... Like, Na Na'Vi just go for Roshan when the time is right. That could be the easier thing to happen right now. D DT still have to pick themselves up another up another uh, hero. They haven't decided which of the slots they're going to go. Well, we had to Viper again taken out. It's just one of the, the popular ones for DT. And that's the only reason why it's mass being banned out here. It would be... Like, it's not even a massive concern to the rest of Na'Vi players. It would keep the Wraith King out so we couldn't move quite freely because there's no jumping abilities from uh, the two support heroes. Darkseer, though, can surge him away. So if someone gets caught, you just surge him out. Uh, and Brewmaster is the pickup. Now, like, turn to um, this, this almost invites them to run a... Like, it still could be the TA. There's no reason right, not to not run the TA up against this Brewmaster. There's a lot of pain that can come the way once they get through the refraction charges. Ten I'm just thinking remaining. about, like, though, what would let you win up against the Luna? And the nukish damage Five coming out from Na'Vi would be remaining. more than enough. They could also go in for the OD. Radiant team. Could be another one. SD's the ban from Puppy, so that's the one he thinks they're going to run. With both Centaur as well as Brewmaster, the SD would be a like a like a fine combo hero. I was wondering if we'd be a little bit too defensive on the bottom. And they actually now think it's going to be the Storm Spirit. To pick. Would be a nice range jump in, in and out. Then he could still go for the puck, but it's a little bit more dangerous when you, if you can get shackled when you're jumping in. I have a little bit more concerns about it if he goes for a puck. Need to have someone with a little bit more tank ability. With, with also the Brewmaster going to go towards the mid lane. You could get away with... Well, you could get away Ten with any kind of hero remaining. in that middle lane. You could even run Magnus with your lineup here for Na'Vi if they wanted to. Five second, five get a power buff up to a Wraith King, let him run in there. Nah, they go with the Templar Radiant Assassin. Team with a Wraith King as well as the TA, and you're on the dire side. It's just too good to pass up. You need you need to have that. You need to have that kind of pickup. So then you just rip through Roshan. Could all, they can still also do Roshan at level one here. With Chilling Touch buff up as well as Vampiric Aura, they could in fact rip through Roshan. Count initiation from Dream Team in the early times also would not be Ten as amazing. Remaining. It's still a decent level 1 fight, don't get me wrong on that, but... Five seconds remaining. Still want to see their secondary support. Dazzle was the one I thought they were going to be picking Ten up. Seconds remaining. The survivability was the only Five thing I was searching remaining. for from them. So the rest of the lanes are very obvious. And they should go for a Visage. Trying to turn around. Returns the way of Na'Vi. For all the DPS they want to dish out. Just make that Visage a little bit stronger. Na'Vi are definitely looking in a very solid position right now. They have every major laner they would really be searching for. The early advantage should go the way of Dendi up against the Brewmaster, even though Drunken Haze will cause a couple of problems. Mirana, Wraith King, as well as Ancient Apparition. If they can't get a kill with that lane, I don't know what they...
into the draft as uh it looks like we have started up so uh no one's actually died luckily no first plus missed but now they didn't go for roshan level one they just went for a bit of a wander battle. around what we got we got again just one aggressive observer ward left behind blocking up the two camps and the lanes it is a force on the off lane <laughs> Koro. This is the second time I've seen Na'Vi do this, and I'm not sure, like, it's, they attacked it in the, in the last one. It's like they're trying to bait DT to think they're going in for Roshan, or, but DT have no vision around it, the so they're basically begins. next leveling themselves. That's all that's really happening here. Regeneration! But a horse on the bottom, Funnick up on the top, so lanes are exactly as expected. Do you want to give a, an extra increase of damage towards this Templar Assassin if he wants Chilling Touch at the early stages? The Brewmaster in the mid, but I think Puppy also realized that it would sacrifice levels for Dandy, but he could technically zone out the Brewmaster in the early stages. It would just cost him a little bit of life. Yeah, and there, there's your Chilling Touch already. So, bonus damage. It's almost impossible to get a denial over on Dandy when he can dish out that much bonus. Between the Refraction and the Chilling Touch bonus damage. Yeah. People come in. So they see the visage from Koro. He's got stun available. The Grave Shield's already gone, and Koro, he actually holds the stun for now. No point wasting his mana again. He's already used one of his Hellfire Blasts. He needs the other one so a Vorus can combo up with the arrow as he just tries to force the Lunar out here. Lunar Relaunch is in for a rough time. Did actually get a Stout Shield. Instead, went in for uh, just the Ring of Protection in the early stages here. Going for a Ring of Quilla. Koro, bait it out, the stun again. Then he's taking a lot of damage here in the middle lane. And Brewmaster's already got his bottle, so he can keep that going. And these lanes are going to get really, really iffy as far as first blood goes. The bottom lane should be the one to initiate in, but if Brewmaster can be a little bit over-aggressive and get some good Drunken Ball... Actually, he never even got a Drunken Brawl. He went for the Drunken Haze straight away, so 45% miss chance. Trying to stop Denny from getting those last hits. It's not really the direct attack which is causing him problems. It's going to be the side blade spill damage, which will cause the problems for here for ZXC. No. Well, up on top lane, the Centaur. He's five for one for now. But he's got to burn through a lot of consumables to stay on this lane. They're burning through actually as much as each other here. Sounds yeah. about funny. You go into that lane when you when you like, you want to attack half life, and then you get like. This is a little bit of, re of reflect damage. <laughs> Not on. I was moving up for a rune, so it's a haste rune for Puppy. Looks like he was trying to protect it and uh, just for Denny so we can bottle it up. But both hit both players in the middle lane will now have to... Uh, the bottle's back on the couriers. Now that's <laughs> funny, he's now in a position where he's capable of creep skipping him. Getting afterlife just aggroed the creep wave down this far. He really is burning through his consumables. But at the same time, they've both only got one salve left. Both going for normally HP regeneration builds. Oh, trouble on bottom lane. There's the passage to go down. First so that's where the first bubble finally be spilled. It was ours all along. Enough mana for another Hellfire Blast, but there's three one charges up the sleeve here for Raid King. So if he triggers that, then he will have enough for another Hellfire Blast. And they want to force this lane out. Koro? Okay, yo, yo, yo. Way too aggressive. He's dragging the creep wave up. Unfortunately for him, there's no camp he can send this into, but the arrow, the creep tanks it for the Shadow Shaman. They could have turned into that fight, but now with the arrow on cooldown, Radiance and Na'Vi split two different ways attack. on this bottom. We're considering a follow-up, but they get kept caught in the tree line. There's not easy access to move around here. They can't get the return kill, but it's better that Na'Vi didn't get themselves a second kill on this bottom lane or else the bottom lane, I won't say it'll be completely lost and they should abandon it because it's not as though it's their try lane. I mean, fairly rough for him anyway. I won't take long before this, go this happens again. <laughs> Centaur double-edging to find last hits. Bottom lane, I said Hellfire Blast. Just off to the side, the Grave Chill's already been used. He was trying to get this close enough. Shackles over on a Vort, and they may want the Mirana, but he's still got lead for Wade, and the Sun's gonna go on Nubik. They get the last nuke down with that Soul Assumption damage. Luna's able to limp herself away and pop off that salve, so the Wraith King will be lost here on the bottom lane. So DT, they strive back with their defensive lane. Radiance middle tower is under attack. He'll be kill off for Vort, and Kuro is now back in the fight. B. Well, actually, what, he attempted Chilling Touch, but actually hit on no one? Radiance top tower right. is under no. attack. No, he just 
just is so low on mana. He didn't animation and it was just for the vortex or something. Yeah, it's just for the vortex. Mana disappears. Like now he can no longer channel anything else. I'm like, hmm. Then he again had a minus TA. The build for him. And that probably won't change for all the TAs he plays in the future. Levels, good progression into a, into a big item in, into the early mid game. <laughs> Koro. <laughs> the way he now plays. Human shield in front of a Vorst. Will forever stand there. This top lane is starting to get a little bit more imbalanced now. 29-2 up against a 17-1. Afterlife starting to dry, to like, just to fall off. With the Soul Ring, never ending Iron Shell spam, and the double Iron Shells up at level 3. It just takes too much of the life points away from Centaur. So for him to come in and get these last hits is just next to impossible. And then he, to fight underneath the tower and get the last hits, he basically used double edge to find last hits there. The tower is going to cause him too many problems. But Vorst with Phase Boots, he has a lot of damage to the PGG with the arrow and Hellfire Blast down to the Versace. Starfall helps him out, they're moving over to Nubik. Chilling Touch is now worn off on all of them apart from the Wraith King. Got one last hit, and maybe with this swing, a lot of damage. Kuro takes the double kill. Now there's three for the price of zero going out in the bottom lane in favor of Navi. Kuro, yes, be careful, Danny. That's got your bottle on it. T already coming back down to the bottom lane. One of them actually got cancelled. Oh, they misclicked. Lubik was meant to be down there, unless they're purposefully trying to give the space to Visage to find his level 6. Been stacking up the Ancients now. Nice. Easy farm later on for a Vost. With a hero like a Wraith, with two points up in Vampiric Aura. You can already see the intention of, the, of this lineup. Radiance they want to force the lanes. They want to push attack. the towers. They want to keep themselves up at high life points. So they're racking up as many, uh, as much of that percentage as possible from the life steal. See how far they can force this. And with the tier one tower to go down, there will be a lot Denied. of extra money flooding into this Navi lineup on all lanes, including the top where Funic is currently building into his mech. Dyer's He's got a lot of regeneration, Afterlife attempting a hoof stomp. He'll need an ult in order to do that, which he does actually have, but he's just not using. That's to Denny going into his own jungle, looking for the farm. You. Poppy returns to bottom lane with the TP scroll. After going a bit of a walkabout, Shadow Sharp is going to die in the bottom lane. A boss with the last hit, Koro doesn't have his ulti available with the chilling touch bonus damage. He's looking for the last one, there's the Alpire Blast. So even though Koro will go down, he gives a double kill over to a boss in the bottom lane. And Nubik has no friends anymore. And he, okay. He doesn't have enough mana really for sat in the mid, even though he's got some nicely prepared TA traps around that middle lane. The two for the price of one, but it's more money into a Vorst. They're feeding this early DPS for the Marana. This Maelstrom's gonna come in under 15 minutes at this point. Either that or just, like, actually he's almost at a point where he can build into the drums. And we're only eight minutes in for that, and that's a rather expensive item for the early, early stages of the game before you have the ability to flash farm out. Top lane, looks like Kuro comes to join in the fun. <laughs> Double Iron Shell does its work again with the Hellfire Blast, and that's Kuro now up at level 6. Radiance so the ranking ulti is now being, attack. like, have to be taken into account for all future fights. And you're seeing Na'Vi just, like, moving light years ahead. Chilling touch from, from Puppy. Is actually able to reach a horse with that one? No, it's around the tree line. It is rune as well. Kuro will just take that and search for a kill on mid. Brewmaster has the split, and he's actually too way damn that damage onto the Luna. No mana here for a boss to throw out Narrow, but just his attack. physical DPS is ripping through the facade. And then Luna leap in a boss. Whoa, 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 whoa! Arrives. Sarge gets to end his mega kill streak and get his level six from that. For the price of killing off the Lunar of Most? <laughs> Question mark? Not sure if Dyer's that was worth tower it. Is under attack. <laughs> His puppy found himself some extra hey, levels. Yeah. Oh, there goes the Passage. No, I wasn't even watching, but that Red King just ran through the rear. And now he looks over to PGG. Radiant's There's still that ulti on Kuro. Okay, Puppy. Oh, okay. The Kuro ulti will trigger. The Yang comes up. They save a familiar drop down just to make sure they can control him for the maximum amount of time. And that means they got themselves a kill. While in middle lane, there's actually a dive going on. We'll jump back to that now, where it's uh, a long way back behind. The Moonlight Shadow went out, trying to give him a little bit of cover fire. The leap up as well. Denny was just out of range for that, but Funny just backs off the life in. There's no sense or ulti available. Even the Saturn from inside the tree inside the neutrals is fighting against him. The Iron Shell can still reach as well as the attack from Marana. 
Great thing for the Centaur will then be the trade-off. Still looking at the heroes that are dying for the Dire side. If you check it out, you got one on the Mirana and you got three on the Wraith King. The Wraith King doesn't care about his about if he lives or dies. For him, it's kind of like, if my ult is off cooldown, then I should Radiant's die because I give the slow, attack. I give the effect, I give the ability for the rest of my team to chase. That's the goal you're looking for from the Wraith King. While all this is going on, there's been some good farm coming the way of ZXC. Not amazing, but he hasn't died, so he's at least held on to it. But it means that Blink Dagger is now available for the Brewmaster. The question is, who is he wanting to kill off? Because the only one he can... Re like, there's two heroes he could kill. The first one is Ancient Apparition, and the second one is the Darkseer. Now that I see Darkseer as a mech, there's only one hero he can kill off, and that's the Ancient Apparition. Papa well, Hugh's actually been sold off by Familiar Kuro. Well, he's in trouble. Shekel's holding him there, and then with the Familiar drop downs too, and the loser beams, Luna can pick herself up a double kill. The two supports go down. So they see with a haste stream, he's trying to harass a Vorst out. Yeah, but the reason why I don't think Brewmaster can kill off the other guys, because TA, it's Refraction, Meld, and then Invis will just be able to hide through most of it. Okay, some late items. Uh, and Maran's got herself a leak. So while you're splitting, she'll just leap herself away. So you'll need more help. You can't go one-on-one -on -one with the broom from the Brewmaster. You'll need more support. Bottom lane of Vorst. It's familiar to starting to zone them out. He's going to really start to regret the fact he gave that kill over. Because that gave him the level 6. That gave him the familiars here. And now they leap down. Darkseer up wall. They've already got PGG locked there. He's trying to go for a quick hex. And a Vorst will pop the drum charges. They're chasing down Nubik and he just turns into the Eclipse. Kuro wants to keep going with it because they've already tanked up the Eclipse damage to the Hellfire Blast. Arrow from Rana still on cooldown. The Aeoli a little bit off target here. But the Iron Shell damage on Kuro is just giving him a license to dive here. With the Moonlight Shadow as well. Familiars are on the way and Hellfire Blast. Funny just comes through, mops up the rest, and they get themselves a double kill from the Iron Shells. Kuro, he's hiding in the tree lines now. The Familiars don't know where he is. They drop on down. And Funny kind of needs a bag to cut the path down. Yep. Smoke him. There's one tree. There's one tree that the familiars come up and then Kuro will die. The fact wasn't deep enough for him. And now Funnik may lose his life for this. A Vorse being shackled up. Those familiars are going to dish out a lot of damage. Ha a Vorse has to leap himself away. And Funnik, he's got no mana for the mech. He's still short. The arrow on PGG. Funnik, ah, oh, turns in. Soaring. Iron Shell first. Iron Shell damage brings the kill. A little bit further up. Afterlife. Meld hit won't be able to get the kill here. Snap Rishan was the one to kill off the Brewmaster. And no split being used. He must have been short of mana. By a one before death, but Nafi severely diving into these tier one towers, but they're getting away with it. 15 for 7 now, a level 11 Templar assassin with an itching hand of Midas, Radiant which is still on cooldown. Has been denied. He could look towards Roshan shortly. The bottom tower was also denied by the Luna. So we end up having a, a one tower for a one tower. Obviously, DTE. Claim the one on the bottom. Radiance Middle Tower is under there, attack. There goes your pinks. This I one was expecting from the last game. But it never really closed. happened. You can go in and take the Aegis anymore. At least it didn't happen when I was expecting Navi to go in when, in the last game. I was also maybe a little bit premature for that. Our game boost now finished on the Ancient Apparition. A nice thing to have for both Dendi as well as Korra. There's some rough mana troubles. But don't ever seem to be throwing out. Funnix fine, can I, Shell? Uh, I mean, he's got, um, Soaring. Well, the Familiar's already dropped me down. The tower goes down to Master of the Mords of Air, but they tried a Tier 1 tower for an Aegis the Immortal, and maybe a little bit more. There's your Hellfire Blast over, with the arrow to combine it, and with the Iron Shell damage and the base attack damage coming out from a Toro of War Luna, it's looking good. Now, ZXC, maybe time for your split to happen. Hellfire Blast, and you more follow up Sons of some burst damage back back in. The wall will go. The split does come off, and Funny comes a lot of damage with Afterlife. Wolf stopping as well, double edging him through the rear, or the extra star fall. Mavor's already with a double kill. The Brewmaster, he's battling. Is storm ruling. Kuro's come back alive again. You see the movement speed there on 168 uh, on as well as PGG. It's a real rough time, and then a blink away by the Brewmaster. Nice, nice escape, but at the same time, Navi is still here in fourth. They've only lost the Dark Sea. I take that back. They've lost Puppy as well, the Ancient Apparition. The Visage gives away his life to get that kill. These are also capable of escaping themselves away to safety. That was a resummon during the fight. So if he lost them again, it would have been a lot more critical. 19 to 9 now on the board with almost a 10,000 experience advantage going the way of Na'Vi. 
6,000 for the gold. How's this looter looking? Treads, ring of a caller. Almost Radiance enough for the Yoga Club. Tower is under attack. A little bit short. Those four deaths have really hurt Nubik. Means this Lunar has never become any kind of powerhouse during Radiant a team fight. Not to mention fortified. her levels are still so far behind. Radiant's Only got one point up in the Bouncing Glaives. Radiant's Chasing down PGG for the moment. Movement speed, 350 versus 335. Kuro, if he kept running straight down south, he would have caught him. But the pings are coming out for Afterlife right now. This may be the wisest choice next. Force out the bottom lane, try and push into the Tier 2 tower. It is one of the worst positions. The tier 2 towers for both sides on the on the side lanes are the worst towers you can try and fight in. That's always tower is under this attack. damn ramp. It's the same thing up uh, up on the top Radiant's lane. There's a little bit more room to move around the, this tier 2 tower up on the top. It's just a little bit better. But again, ramp. It's the same thing for the dire side. There's a little bit more room to move, but you've got to be able to secure it with a lot of early wards. And then on this bottom lane, it's the critical one again. The bottom lane is always the roughest place to fight for the tier 2 towers. The top lane isn't as much, isn't much better. That'll go on with Denny with his TD rune. Gonna wear off in a moment though. At least able to push out the lane a little bit faster. Top lane tier 1 tower being defended. Just fun at getting some extra pressure. Now he's got his blink dagger up and running. She's looking for our other items. Actually got double blinks over on uh, DT. One's over on that Shadow Shaman. So PGG's got himself a fresh one. There's Lifesteal is now being attempted up by the Lunar, so Radiant's we're not going into the BKP. It may just be Lifesteal for now. There's a Helm with a Dominator. I'd say it's still actually a little bit greedy, Dyer's but in these team fights, it attack. may be what she requires. Just some basic regeneration and armor attack. increase, and then the ability for Lifesteal. These Millions have no damage fallen. whatsoever. They can't push anywhere you're near as Dyer's fast as Navi. Monkey King Bar is now the uh, the Dyer's choice of medicine to be delivered by Dandy. Not going in for the Desolate of this game. And they just go high grounds. <laughs> and what's the trade off? T1 Tower, which actually still isn't dead yet. PGG has to stick around and bring it down. They've got attack. Brewmaster ready for a jump. Oh, you're going to get four people in the camp by blink away by Funny. Yeah. It was quick enough for the split will go and the Moonlight Shadow as well. Orb stop, but now they can't see a fourth. They need some kind of detection. Do they have detection? Nope! Brewmaster ulti down! <laughs> when Na'Vi can just reinsert again. Metal Strike's being used to get rid of these remaining Brewlings, but ZXC, like, they were never gonna last that long. So Brewmaster ulti is down. Should have shown him still has his wards, but Centaur doesn't have Stampede either. And Na'Vi already have this tower of very low life. Familiars will come in, they get rid of one. They still get the secondary stun. With a rock down, but a forced arrow, L5 blast, they only just get destroyed of the Sarge. He was still able to summon up, but then another great back into a wall. With the Iron Shield damage, the Master 7 was a there, causing a lot of troubles, as well as the Lucent Beams. Liard. A lot of that, however, with his refraction of PGG, he freaked himself out for the shackles, and then realized his mistake. Because he was half down the ramp and facing up against four Na five Na'Vi heroes. One of them being shackled, of course. There goes your tower. Hellfire Radiant's Blast just keep the Lunar out. And they focus on the ranks. Problem is they need your creep wave to come in. There's backdoor regeneration protecting it. Shock for Denny. That, that uh, refraction is still up, but now they go for the zone of the Brewmaster. There's no ulti. A horse is in there. The mech charges back off cooldown again. They leave themselves up. The Aeoli will connect there on the Lunar. One attack, and it's Kuro with him being surged in Hellfire Blast. They guarantee themselves the kill. Brewmaster back out again. Another three-man clap, but the survivability is just so big. So it's such a funny 55 line points. He does survive. Send Runs through with the rear. They're able to get the pick off as the ranking only is now triggered. Puppy, he's got two one charges in a moment. He's just trying to juke afterlife around the melee racks. Now, Brewmaster jumps out, gets two good, uh, two good hits off. The Dandy melt strike up sexy, hits up the hill too, but he can't finish the job. The TA trap's there. Kuro, he goes up a stun, but Dandy five light points almost actually died from that. The clamp not in range. Attack. It was the double edged spill damage that came out when, when uh, Kuro died. But they'll get through the Aegis Immortal. Now, does Teddy try and find this or not? And the answer? No, well, the answer is he can't. Radiant Shackles, Hex, Soul Assumption, Hoof Stomps, Double Edges. Now they give their entire life Aegis Immortal over to DT. They already have such a huge advantage that they may not give two hoots. 13,000 gold, 15,000 to 16,000 experience. The full Mjolnir is finished over on, on a Vorst. The Monkey King Bar is finished on the Templar Assassin. 
King has himself 2k gold and the double braces. Considering they've already got drums, actually they've already used all the charges. So Kuro may still buy into drums like he has done the last game. But considering he's also 100 gold away or 50 gold away, 60 gold, ugh, roughly that gold away uh, from having his blink dagger, he may as well wait for it. The ghost up to see it for Funic. He's going to be careful with that. He gets himself in a little bit too close to that facade as well as Shadow Shaman. He can cop a lot of damage, but instead of stop the loot from being able to battle it directly. Blink Dagger has arrived now for Afterlife. Finally, we get his critical item. He built Mech first because DT were just having such a rough time during the team fights. Had no other real choice. Oh, poor PGG. The AOD hits on the uh, on the Brewmaster because so it's just Starfall, and then the Olnia comes up. It's almost asking ZXC to try and fight him. A Vorst. Okay, this is a little bit harder. Drunken Brawler making life very, very difficult for a Vorst. Radiance top tower. <laughs> Can't get any kind of attack a chat onto that Brewmaster. Radiance structures are fortified. That's also the other reason why Denny went for the Monkey King Pa. There's no evading this time around with that Drunken Brawler. Got the true hit to work, Puppy. Radiance top An ancient apparition level nine is able to zone out the Luna, and now Puppy realizes the mistakes were made. He's got a non enough life points to survive this one, even with his one shot. He was doing well, but a middle lane, point blank range arrow on the Brewmaster. Kuro doesn't have ulti, so on cooldown for another 18 seconds. But the chasing deck see into the tree line. Arthurine's also here looking for the opening and they just make go Kuro go sparkle sparkle then a hoof stomp into the double edge gonna spill Radiance the damage out the Meg Titan is still there though which means they turn to Arthurine Iron Shell damage Kuro he's trying to get rid of at least a couple of these familiars but the Mana Serpent more trap will work they need to cut him out of here his ag his ag his ag his agonims his ag his ag his the ank will trigger off and he actually manages to whittle his way out through the side but there's so much damage Kick up with their max damage, and then with a follow-up sentry ward, Hawkstorm double edge of boss just gets nuked. <laughs> on the way, they're looking to fight this. And PGG not overextending into Funic, so the A ulti from Poppy is unable to connect. And now they're starting to feed away their life points. Not to mention that experience back the way of Dream uh, of uh, Dream Team. I'm gonna set up for another stack. It's like Puppy still wants to finish up his agonims. These critical items have to arrive before you can really start fighting for DT. Like you got yourself a nice Ogre Club on the Luna. Yay. Uh, but <laughs> that BKB is still not done for her. And until it's done, even when it's done, the problem is still there that the DPS coming out from both TA as well as the Mirana is more than enough to get, get rid of that Luna. BKB doesn't give you enough life points to survive at all. And now we're actually going in for the BKB of, of his own Dendi. There's... Oh, would you go Deso? Eh, he could still go Deso. Ulti. He could do it. Vladimir, so at least we get new aura up for the Brewmaster. And Puppy. Just hoping for that extra uh, 2,000 gold worth of farm. If he can get it. Funnick might be stealing it from him in a moment. Is it worth the AALT puppy to steal this? No, he's going to let Funnick have it. And Funnick's building into what looks to either be a Yule Scepter or a Scythe of Ice. Koro's now stacked up the double live steal, so he's got Vladimir's. Looks like he's also starting up into a Necro Book. So their ability to push high ground, their, abil their ability to have a little bit more power during these team fights is just going to increase for Navi. And they're just waiting for Roshan. I think that's the, the primary thing they're waiting for. DT might have to do exactly the same thing, but the problem is they don't have vision inside the pit. When Na'Vi do, they have the TA Tramp watching it very closely. You have a lot of maneuverability to jump in with the three Blink Daggers between Brewmaster, Centaur, as well as Shadow Shaman. And then the Familiars as well from Visage. They're not agony for the Familiars yet, but they will still be able to see and do a little bit of problematic uh, stunning against Na'Vi. Then at the same time, they're trying just to fend up their ancients. And that's that's proving to be slightly problematic. So it's gonna be a blink into a clap. The slow would have been enough, but then they would have been coming under range of a Vorse arrow. Now also in range of the of the, uh, of the double damage. They see that? Yeah, they see that. The TA trap can see it. They're gonna leave it for Dendi. Dendi is gonna go into the BKB. Right choice to get. At the same time. 
A Vorse has 2.6k gold on him. The Yule Sector was picked up by Funnick as well, and with Roshan up, get themselves a 5 second arrow. Beat down. And DT, well, they're not all there. They're actually missing one. The Centaur's not ready to fight this. They, they can't contest this now. Without the AoE stun from Centaur, they cannot, they cannot take this fight on Roshan. Letting Na'Vi have the Aegis the Immortal. And yeah, it goes into the hands of Dendi. He picked up his fresh BKB. Na'Vi now can go in through the bottom lane. They have enough power behind them. They don't have the Aghanim Scepter yet over on Puppy. He's still shot by 2k. Or the Necrobox. But when you get Nagus Immortal on the back of Dendi, you're good. Stag C, the AOD, the Life Blast actually connected. But Dendi Brumas splits out. Familiar drop down too. Stop Kuro in his tracks. Puppy getting through. Down Funny puts the back wall. He's made chaos on the other lines. And now DT, they're cut off. They're cut off from the Brumas. So they get rid of one Familiar. Dendi working on that one. It's just the Earth Brueling who's running at east. Brumars are ulti on cooldown, that may just be enough. Dyer's I know also you've got the Dark Seer ulti on cooldown, but when they can pick this off, arrow into Nubik, they get the kill. Dark Life jumps up for the sun on Dendi, but Iron Shell over on Raging, who surged up, able to get another kill into the Massage. Couldn't even get the Solar Sun to the Force takes up a double kill, and they back back in the Brewmaster. Your death was a secret. Have the power just to force the mid, and this should be double ranking for Navi, and possibly even the GG call coming out from DT. With that DD rune in the back of Dendi, they pump out so much damage. Centaur cannot stop this. And he must wait at least 18 seconds before he's got support, and he must wait 40 seconds before the back of full strength. And even then, that's Brewmaster alive, and not with the Brewmaster split. Rotate bottom, in the fact they don't not even gonna wait for it. DT except reality. GG is definitely called, and Navi will go 2 0. Navi that matchup up against DT, making their second straight victory, two game victory here in the D2CL, which does propel them up the board. Now, they'll actually find themselves, I'm not gonna say they're actually drawn with Power Rangers yet, uh, considering Power Rangers have one win as well as.